This blows my mind that no one is talking about this. This is the dark side of the photography industry that none of the big YouTubers, and yes, I'm talking about the Peter McKinnons and the Chris Howes and pretty much all of the big YouTubers of the world, no one is talking about. Now, before you go label me as a hater, just let me clarify something real quick. I actually have a huge amount of respect for these guys. They've taught me a ton. I owe a lot of my knowledge of photography and videography to these guys, and they've impacted my life a lot, as well as a lot of other creators. But there is something that they are not telling you. You see, they make the creative lifestyle look really easy because they got the amazing locations, the mesmerizing B-roll, the giant brand deals. Like they're making a really good amount of money off of their passion. And all you're seeing is the end result, but you don't see how they got there. You see, they'll give you all the gear reviews. They'll tell you what to buy. They'll tell you how to film that epic B-roll. They'll tell you how to tell great stories. They might even show you how to make $1,000 next weekend with your camera. But what they don't tell you is how to make it sustainable. Because let's be honest, making $1,000 is great, but you're not going to create a living making $1,000 once in a weekend. Because most of these videos, you are not able to take this and compound it and repeat it. That's the problem. So obviously these guys have cracked the code of what it means to be a successful filmmaker, but the problem is most of the success is actually not off of their freelance career. So while they're living this awesome lifestyle, it's mostly off of things like AdSense or affiliate links or big time brand deals, or yes, even a course, but they're not telling you how to make money off of your freelance career. And the crazy thing is most of them actually started as freelance photographers or videographers, and they kind of transitioned out of it to start doing YouTube because they wanted to make more money, they couldn't get enough clients, it was too inconsistent, you know, maybe they wanted to be more creative, all kinds of different reasons that they would move into YouTube, but they no longer do the freelance or at least on a regular basis. So the problem is that's probably where you're at. You're probably in the stage where you're doing freelance photography and you probably hit some roadblocks of being consistent, of getting that consistent inflow of leads and clients. And maybe you've even followed their advice of like, there's how you make a thousand dollars with your camera next weekend. And, and maybe you're even successful at it. But the problem is how do you compound that and make it repeatable and actually do it again so you can make an actual living with your camera. So I guess the question is why should you listen to me? I'm just another dude on YouTube, right? Well, my name is Nash Hagen and I am a professional brand and resort photographer. I've been doing it for the last four years. I've worked with some of the biggest names in the industry that you would know. And I've made my career and my living off of shooting for these brands and resort. Okay. I don't make a living off of YouTube. I make zero dollars off of YouTube. You can probably check at least at the time of me posting this, I have like 150 subscribers and I barely get any views on any of my videos. I make zero dollars. So I make these videos because when I first started out, I was watching these big YouTubers and I was learning all kinds of stuff like composition, lighting, what lens to use, what camera was the best, all this stuff, which is great. But I wasn't learning how to actually create a business, which means I wasn't able to get clients because I didn't know what I was doing. So I saw the creative side, but I didn't see the business. And to be honest, it makes sense because most people would rather watch epic cinematic B-roll or a crazy travel vlog than they would some guy talking about how to create offers and create a systematic sales system. It's just like not as interesting. But here's the thing. You can't do the cool things professionally, keyword professionally, I actually make money at them unless you know the business side of things. And that's why I make this video. So when you watch these big time YouTubers or maybe you're looking on Instagram, it's honestly really easy to fall into the trap of thinking that the only way to make decent money with photography or videography is with social media or with brand deals or with AdSense. And honestly, I don't really blame you. You might even think that once you build a following or once you're good enough that you can start to get reached out to by these big time brands and you can start to do brand collabs too. And the truth is there's actually three major ways that you can make money with your camera. However, most people are just seeing the social media aspect and that is honestly the toughest way to go. So let me explain. The first way is to work for a company. This is just like a normal job, nine to five. You go there, they tell you what to do. There's not a whole lot of creativity. You can make a decent amount you'll probably be able to sustain your family, but you're not going to scale it and it's not going to be like, you know, a crazy business or anything like that. Which, if you value consistency and security, then that's probably the best route for you. The second way and the way that I personally have built my business is probably what you're trying to do. It's what a lot of these big time YouTubers started out doing is either freelancing or building a creative business. Now, they're pretty similar, but there's a little bit of nuance, so I'll just explain the difference real quick. So in both cases, you're working with clients. As a freelancer, you're pretty much just doing it by yourself. Either they're hiring you one off as like a cam op or an editor, or you're you're a one-man show and you're doing it all for them. Whereas a creative business, you're actually the one in charge and maybe you've hired a team. So a video editor, a shooter, maybe a sales team to actually go out and help you get jobs and help you actually execute on the jobs so that you can only work on what you actually want to work on and it's far more scalable. So the great part about this is that as long as you have the skill set, you can literally start getting jobs tomorrow. Whereas the third that most people think is to rely solely on social media and brand collabs. So I know a lot about this because I've personally built a following on both Instagram and TikTok. 
and it's allowed me to have some amazing experiences. It's also pretty lucrative brand deals, but the problem is it's not sustainable and it's definitely not scalable unless you have a large following to begin with. And the problem with having a large following is it takes a lot of time to build. I've been doing this for five years and it also takes a lot of time to sustain it. I'm not gonna post something and then tomorrow I have a job, whereas I can with the second way of freelancing or having an actual creative business. And just to take it a step further, you'd actually be shocked how many people you can look at on Instagram or YouTube that look like they have a lot of followers that look like they're doing epic brand deals and all this stuff. And a lot of it is just free collab, like they're not even getting paid for it. So a lot of people are actually struggling, but you wouldn't even know it by looking at their page. So all that to say, it's actually not about your photo or your creative skills. It's actually way more about the business skills that you have. And ultimately that's why I'm making this video. So if you want to create an actual sustainable living with photography or videography, the best way to do it is to create a business in the creative space. So what does this actually look like? Like, well, 30,000 foot overview, basically we're just gonna be shooting for clients. They're gonna pay us to shoot photos or shoot videos for them and basically to solve a problem that they have. So before we jump into the tangible aspects of how to do this for yourself, we first have to lay the groundwork. So number one, you have to specialize in some sort of niche. So personally, I love travel, I love adventure, I love landscape photography, but the problem was I couldn't really make a living selling landscape photography. In fact, there's very few people who can. Like maybe you can sell some prints, maybe you can sell it to some tourism board or something like that, but it's very difficult to create a living sustainably just selling landscape photos. So instead of doing that, I had to pivot and I was like, okay, so what can I do that's in the travel and the adventure? and like all that stuff. And I landed on shooting for resorts and adventure brands, meaning I could still implement my love of travel, implement my love of landscape photography, while also being able to provide a tangible solution for a brand that actually needs my content. So now that we understand the business model, let's dive into the actual tangible steps to take in order to make this business a reality. And by the way, if you wanna go deeper into depth into exactly what I'm talking about here, you can check out the link in the description. I got a free training that goes super, super in depth. So once we have our niche, our portfolio, all that kind of stuff, our first step is to create a compelling offer. Now, I actually have a video all about offers that you can check out here if you so desire, but let me just give you a brief overview of what that is. Essentially, what an offer is, is just what you sell, but packaged in a way that solves a problem for a brand. So for example, I might do product photos for adventure brands, but my offer would be, I will create lifestyle product photos for your adventure brand that drive more sales. I'm taking my service and showing how it will actually get a business result for the brand. Now you can do this with all kinds of different things and all kinds of different services. And I dive super in depth in that free training, but just as an overview, that is what an offer is. Now, the second step is to generate hot leads. Now there's two aspects of this. Number one, we have to find people that are actually qualified. And number two, we have to be able to find their email address and actually send them email. So how do we actually know if someone is qualified to be able to spend that five to $10,000 with us? Well, there's actually a few aspects. Number one is they sell something expensive, or at least they sell a lot of those things. So that's personally why I like working with resorts because they have a high average order value, which means they have a higher marketing budget. The second thing is if they have a nice website, but maybe they're lacking video or they're lacking lifestyle photos or they're lacking product photos, that's when you can kind of sneak in. The third aspect is if they have good socials, but maybe their engagement isn't that great, or maybe they're lacking something like reels or lifestyle photography. Any of that kind of stuff that you can help them out with, that's a good end. And then the fourth one, and this is probably the most important, is are they currently running ads? So you may or may not know this, but you can actually go on a brand's Facebook business manager and see if they're running ads. If they are, that means they have a marketing budget and they're likely able to pay for your content. So now that we know how to qualify a client as good, the next step is how do we actually find their email? And it's actually a lot easier than you think. All you have to do is find whatever the brand is, look them up on LinkedIn and find either the brand manager or the marketing manager or the social media manager, and then use a tool like Snob.io I use that personally to just find the client's email address and then we're going to send them an email. So then what do we write in an email? Well, I actually have a software program that allows you to write emails based on AI that are also based on the specific brand and it generates them in like 30 seconds. So if you want to check that out, you can in the link below. But just as a general overview, you want to introduce yourself. You want to point out what their main problem is that they're facing, point out how you can solve that for them, mention any case studies or brands that you've worked with in the past, and then ask them to jump on a call. Once you get on 
on the call, you'll use a basic sales framework that allows you to be able to actually sell that to them. And that leads me to step number three, which is sell to win. Now, a lot of creatives probably don't like the idea of sales because they feel like a used car salesman, but sales is actually just storytelling, which you do every single day. So all creatives strive to be great storytellers and that's all sales is. It's actually just showing the client what the problem is, who their enemy is, and then introducing yourself as the hero that can take them on a journey from A to B. And that is their success story. So if you can sell them on their success story and how you are an integral part of that, then you're likely to close the deal and that's basically it. So sales is super easy when you know the framework. And then the last step, step number four, is automate and scale. Now, if you're a freelancer, you might not ever get to this step, but I would highly recommend it for anybody who wants to build a sustainable and scalable business in photography or content creation. So what automation allows you to do is remove yourself from the day-to-day -day task, like lead generation or just finding client emails, you know, all that kind of stuff, and allow you to focus on what you actually want to focus on. It also allows you to build a team around you. So that's when you hire video editors or sales team or other shooters or whatever it might be, so that you can focus on the creative vision, building the team, managing the team and being involved as much or as little as you want and actually be able to scale the business. And that's what we do with the automation thing. So again, if you're interested in checking out how these actually play out for your creative business, you can check out the link in the description below where I dived super, super in depth into each of these four aspects. Now, imagine if this video was on Peter McKinnon's channel. Honestly, you'd probably click off, you'd probably be bored, you'd probably be yawning, and you probably wouldn't subscribe. But if you're one of those few that actually wants to create a business in photography or video your content creation and you dig this video this is honestly just scraping the surface and you can actually find a lot more on my channel so i'd highly recommend subscribing and checking out some of those other videos and if you haven't already smash that like button because it helps me get this video out to other creative entrepreneurs like yourself and help get this message out to more photographers that are out there in the industry trying to make their dreams a reality so i hope this video was super super valuable for you and i hope to see you in the next one